because we forgot to do the object create yeah we forgot to sorry forgot to create the object that map handling class which is this one map handling dot h so we go up here and we're gonna create the object here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna call it um enemies oops enemies I believe that's enemies and then um yeah so enemies enemy so just call it that enemy so that should be alright um if we do a quick run uh, then we should have that fine yep that's good stuff takes ages to load it's ridiculous yeah so I get loads of lag with this it's stupid um never mind just leave it but I'm sure you guys got that there it doesn't really matter until we've got the enemy's physics this is irrelevant um so I'm just gonna check make sure we haven't got anything else to add on main <laughs> character physics character events enemy physics and yeah enemy and nim Asians. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do is we want to do enemy animations quick. This isn't part of my steps, but um, let's just do it this way because um, if we do it this way, then uh, we don't have to write this layer. So, uh, enemy anim, this is a method that we're going to call up here. So, character physics, void enemy. And the reason why we're doing these methods is because we don't have tons of stuff in our main loop. So, we're just going to do the methods to include multiple stuff. So, enemy dot um, so first thing we're going to have is awake enemies and now I'm sure you've noticed this mistake I did here so it's enemy anim uh, and our next one is going to be enemy dot oops no never mind that one's fine to do so we'd have to comment that out dot piranha ai okay everything else gets done pretty much automatically I don't think there's any more here's commented is there enemy fight yeah that's something we need to do later piranha collision yeah this we can uncomment now it doesn't really matter so leave that, make sure that recognizes perennial collision dot and once again this is not necessary so um, so if we do this should be alright one error call y, what do you mean call y and declare identifier, what are you talking about what you talking about Willis um, yeah that's a small c, sorry about that uh, and that should be alright so we're just going to build it quickly, no need to run it and that's it, succeeded, so what we're going to do um, but succeeded as we know it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work as we want. Um, <coughs> excuse me, um, sneeze there. Um, so what we're going to start and doing is our last class, which is the enemy physics and movement. So it's called enemy fire movement. Can have a drink. Um, so our first method. This is a bit of a beast class, so I just want you to bear with me. If you go on this file, we are going to get this done. So we just need to write a fair bit more code and then we'll be done. So void, oops, void, I'll try and be as quick and as accurate with this as I can. So void enemy, oh, s screw typing all that again. So just do that, enemy fire movement, open those, and then say change direction. Now this is a method used, int element. So int element. And in case you guys weren't sure, element is the. Um, item within the array that we're using. Uh, so then we're saying if walkers uh, we're going to use the word walkers here a lot so um, we probably should copy that um, copy that here not necessarily, oh crap, never mind just copy that, just ruin that. Walkers I dot element, uh, walkers element dot um, walking direction oops, sorry, sorry, sorry walking direction equals equals so if equals left, put that in capitals because that's what we defined as. Um, equals left, then we change that to right. So write this here, and do um, do that equals right once again in capitals. So if it equals, if he's walking left, we move him to the right, and we use this for when he's bumped against something, such as a block on the map. So if he's walking, bumped against it, let's change his direction. Um, that walking direction. Else. So if he wasn't walking to the left, he must be walking to the right. So then we change his direction to the left. So we do this and get rid of one of these equals because we're not comparing, we're setting. Um, and that's our uh, change direction method complete. Our next method is called int. So once again, copy this because we don't want to keep this here. So int um, colliding with walker. And once again, we're sending the element in, int element. So this is if it collides with another uh, walker. 
So two Goombas, for example, collide with each other. And now this is is not really something I'm too proud of. This method, I mean, uh, function. This is something I could have done a bit better, but um, I didn't. So it is working, of course. Um, I want to give you guys something that isn't working, but it isn't perfect. So what this does is checks if one walker is colliding with any other walkers and if he is then do something about it and change some positions so um, for an i equals zero, zero if i is less than max walkers walkers then i plus plus and once again um, we're going to type the walker and then we're going to have to copy that so we can keep using it so for an i and then we say if db sprite exists if the walker exists make sure we're going to copy this so we can use it walkers element dot id so if that walker id exists if that walker exists if db sprite exists walkers um, oops sorry that's not element that's i that we're supposed to be using because we want to compare that uh, walker that we just sent in to all the other ones so if db sprite exists do that um, then we do uh, if Walker's eye dot is alive, so we want to check if that walker is alive because we're not him bumping against a walker that is dead. Uh, in a ma um, matter of speaking, we could do that um, because that wouldn't be necessarily wrong. Because oh, uh, that Goomba is just dying, so let's um, let's turn the one that was walking against him back. We could do that because that wouldn't be really wrong. But the way I designed this, we haven't done that. Then we do if DB sprite collision. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to compare every single Goomba that we're going through in the for loop to the one we sent in. So, um, DB Sprite Collision, uh, we want to check element here, so the one we just sent in, DB Sprite Collision, FDB Sprite Collision, oops, 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 yeah, that's how it goes, sorry about that. And the target is, uh, oh my god, I'm such an idiot, I can't believe I missed that. Walkers element dot ID, sometimes you have brain dead moments. Uh, walkers element uh, i, so the second one's i, dot id. So we're comparing through all the walkers that are going through in the for loop to the one we sent in and then if it collides we return i. So we just simply return the one it collided against and then we move them back or we do something like that. Uh, I'm not sure we've written that already but if we haven't we'll write that in this class. So uh, that's this done. Um, yeah and otherwise we return minus one and this we use to compare because an array can't be a minus one value it can't have a minus one element, it can have a zero so we'd have to have a uh, user number here that isn't used anywhere else within an array so it has to be minus one in our example so then we go down and our next um, and our next function is something that is used to as usual I'm not copying I'm not writing that from scratch uh, this is something that is used uh, to flash the enemy once they die so it's called what do you call it flash me uh, so we're going to say int time time to flash I want to send in character int character oops character to flash <coughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, if timer if timer to flash so if time to flash oops that's a small t time to flash uh, is greater than 200 so all this is a bunch of if statements so we're going to use um, and time to flash to flash all we're going to do is a lot of copy uh, copy and paste it is less than 300 maybe there's a better way of doing this, I'm sure there is, but uh, this is the way I did mine so db hide sprite and we're going to hide character to flash so if it hit that um, in between that 200 300 milliseconds then we hide them, alright? then what we're going to do, we're going to say else if oops, so what we're going to do is copy that Alright, else say if time to flash is greater than 300, so I'll increase that by 100, and less than 400, we do this. We db show character, so just do that and just um, change the hide to show. Show. And now what we're going to do is we're going to 
so that should be alright for us and what we're going to do now is we're going to copy and paste this a few times once and twice and I believe that's okay for now and the thing you notice is these go up by so 400 here's 500 here's 600 700 all the way up to uh, we go up to a thousand I believe 100 800 so copy this one more time obviously we're gonna have to change those as well so 900 and a thousand and there's a reason why we did this I I mean it doesn't have to be this exact time but uh, I believe this was the best time from when I was doing it so just like that one we're gonna be increasing this by three by a hundred every time so 400 here 500 and you'll notice that this is always the same as the last number but just follow the sequence I'm doing make sure you got the right pattern of it's greater than is less than and as long as you follow that we're gonna have a nice little flashing animation for when they die and we bump on the head so 900 and that's good in my opinion uh, yep 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 I'm fine with that so we have db high db show so just gonna check that's right so db high db show so that's how it works we hide him we show him we hide him we show him we hide him we show him and we show him and the reason why we show him at the end we have to make sure the last one is a showing one because we want to make sure the character doesn't stay hidden or, uh, unless they're dead so um, we might have a flashing animation for any other reason we don't want to necessarily say they're gonna die after this flashing animation so the next thing we're gonna do is the Goomba animation now this is something I found quite cool because I got this Goomba animation that has a few frames excuse me I think it has about five frames so it's not like the normal one where it only has two frames where it's like facing you one two one two it has five so it's giving it more, more of a real look so the next one we're going to do um, enemy fire movement Goomba anim and uh, what we're going to have that is nothing so this is something we'll have uh, on that so for in I I mean we go through the walkers every time no point doing this every time so just copy that because we're just gonna check uh, is alive so copy the is alive part as well so all we're doing is gonna go through every Goomba and update their animations and that's right um, so if they're alive obviously we don't care about uh, putting the um, animations on a dead Goomba so DB sprite walkers and as usual just copy the this bit because it's a lot of trouble. Dot ID the DB sprite him, and then uh, walkers I dot X, walkers I dot Y, uh, and then we're going to say G because that's the default Goomba animation plus walkers I dot current frame, and that will make the animation look beautiful. And then we're saying if walkers I dot um, is walking. Uh, dot walking sorry not w is walking dot walking if he's walking then we do something about it so if he's not walking we gotta make sure we um, we declare him as dead because that's the only other time he's not walking from what I know so if db time if db timer um, if db timer minus uh, walkers I dot walking timer so each walker has their own timer because you don't want them all falling the exact same time because they spawn at different times so that would be bad practice if we did that having them all move at the exact same time we can't have that uh, so if if that's happening if walker dot time is greater than 90 so we have them uh, change animation every 90 milliseconds equals db timer so we reset that so that the next animation only happens after another 90 milliseconds then we say um, uh, if walkers, because all we're doing here is we're checking if their current frame isn't greater than the maximum number of frames. So if it is greater than five, then it equals zero again, because we reset that. Dot uh, current frame equals zero, so that he's not showing frames that aren't his. Basically, that current frame plus plus. So we show one frame, we increment that frame, so it shows the next one the next time, and uh yeah that's it for that bit and then we're going to do make sure you get it on the right one here because we don't want to make those stupid mistakes like I did earlier um do that to make sure you got the right one else if walkers i dot is dying right if he's dying we're going to put the little animation where he falls on his side it's not actually an animation i think it's just a sprite where he falls on his side and uh 
he's pretty much dead. So DB Sprite, and this is where we're going to use that time to flash animation.